go ahead and move on to Dr. Cole again from IDEA Biosciences is back again to discuss the darrow crizotinib combination trial and um, just give us a little more up, of an update on where the metastatic treatment of the IDE-196 is going. Absolutely. Let me uh, share my screen here. All right, everyone, let me know if you're, if the screen here is blocking some things. It didn't do this the last time. Um, and again, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And my goodness, Richard, um, thank you very much. I, I hope to be able to answer some of your questions. If not, I will uh, definitely be back in touch with you. But let's take a look at some of the things that um, IDEA and or Derova Sertib is doing um, in the metastatic uveal melanoma um, setting. Again, I'm going to give some information, which um, Richard already showed a little bit of in terms of our phase one, two clinical trial combination of Derovacertib plus Crizotinib. Um, and again, um, as was mentioned before, it's very important to keep in mind that what I'm about to show you in some of the later slides after uh, we look at some of this data, um, this is single agent data. So phase one, phase two, not phase three. So when we look at um, our patient characteristics in this trial, and this data was presented last year at ESMO, Important thing to keep in mind in terms of our phase two trial here, when we look at the severity of disease in our patients, so when we look at one of our markers, LDH, 60% of our patients in any line cohort, meaning patients who are not frontline, had a increased LDH, you no know, greater than 60% of those patients had an increased LDH, whereas our patients in the frontline cohort, 50% of those patients had an increase in LDH. If we look at our tumor sizes down here, the largest metastatic lesion, the majority of the lesions in both of our cohorts were between three to eight centimeters. And also if we look at the location of the metastases, greater than 50% of the patients in both of our arms had both liver and extrahepatic or outside the liver metastatic disease. So these patients have a pretty high severity of disease that were in our phase one, two trial. And we're looking at our phase two data right now. So again, this is a, a waterfall plot that we've seen before, but this one's sort of divided up in, in, in the two different areas. Um, and again, we want to see bars down, not bars up. And so by looking at these two things, we have a lot of bars down, and that's a good thing. The plus signs talk about confirmed response. In a single arm trial, we confirm response with two CAT scans. So two cycles, these patients have two CAT scans confirming that response. Top waterfall plot is frontline, bottom waterfall plot, any line. So patients, this is a combination of frontline and patients who have more than one line of therapy. The confirmed overall response for our frontline patients, about 45%. And importantly, our disease control rate was about 90%. So disease control rate is a criteria that we use that encompasses stable disease. Another thing that I want to say, when we take a look at tumors that had greater than 30% shrinkage overall, 12 out of 20, it was 60% of the patients. Um, but what's exciting to me is our disease control rate here in the single arm study, about 90%. Stable disease, as we've now, I would say, modern oncology drug development, modern thinking, stable disease is not a bad thing. It truly means we still have that tumor under control. When we look at our any line patients down here, again, patients that are more heavily treated Treated. Confirmed overall response rates about 30%, but our disease control rate, again, is about the same as those frontline patients, about 90%. Again, um, very encouraging single line data. And again, down here where we're looking at this, our heavily pre-treated patients, 62% of these patients in this waterfall plot that we're taking a look at down here had two or greater um, prior lines of therapy. So, and I'm sorry about this on the side here. I couldn't get that to shrink. But what we're trying to show here is that even in our trial, we are HLA A2 agnostic. So we had both HLA2 negative patients and HLA2 positive patients enrolled in this trial. And what's interesting for us is when we take a look at our response rates, again, single arm data, the response rate for our frontline patients is about 42%. And when we take a look at um um, our HLA2 positive patients, frontline patients, there's a 60% response rate. Both patients have 100% disease control rate. When we look at any line patients, HLA2 negative, we have 29% or almost about a 30% response rate with about a 94% control rate. And when we look at any line in the HLA2 positive patients, about a 32% response rate with an 84% disease control rate. 
when we look at our, I'll say, molecular responses with the circulating tumor DNA, again, when we, um, and, and this is regardless of BAP1 mutation, again, another mutation which, which uh, portends to more aggressive disease or, or poor disease or bad tumor markers, we like to say, we're showing pretty robust responses here, again, single agent single arm trial with patients, whether they are first line patients and or pre-treated patients. And again, keep in mind, this is our combination to rovacertib and grisotinib. And so one thing that we have to remember with our uveal melanoma patients, as Richard showed and as I showed a little bit before, the rovacertib is really shutting down signaling through uh, PKC. Another route of signaling with uh, uveal melanoma is through MET. And um, most of our patients, another oncogene, most of our patients are showing increased signaling through MET and crizotinib stops signaling through MET. And in Richard's slide, he showed that aspect of the MET signaling too. So what we like to think in terms of this combination, we're shutting down all signaling that is driving this tumor. So when we look at um, progression-free survival um, in these patients, and again, it's um, any line. When we look at frontline patients and or any line patients, about the same amount of progression-free survival, about seven months. Frontline, uh, 7.1 months specifically, any line, 6.8 months. For patients who only have um, liver disease, it's about 11 months. Um, the treatment duration for this, 50% of the patients had treatment greater than six months, and about 30% of the patients had treatment for greater than one year. When we look at our Kaplan-Meier curves, and again, we have to take this slide, a little bit of grain of salt, because the um, rovacertib crizotinib data is not phase three data, but we're trying to see where this falls into place with some other phase three data. And I would say when we look at this Kaplan-Meier curve compared to some other curves, this gave us the confidence and the wherewithal to conduct our phase three trial. But we do see the PFS curve. And I think the most important thing to uh, keep in mind from this side, if we look at that control arm where the Darrow Adnib arm is. So again, when we look at this slide, again, we're not comparing cross, but we're just taking a look at some numbers. I would say this slide, along with the curve that I just showed you, gave us that confidence to move forward with our phase three trial. So when we look at our potential tolerability, safety, something that was mentioned before, when we look at our grade greater than or equal to three AEs that were drug-related, about a third of the patients in our phase uh, one, two trial. When we look at tumor shrinkage, we have a robust amount of tumor shrinkage when we look at ORR, again, frontline, about 45% of the patients had, some, had a confirmed um, overall response rate. About 30% um, had a confirmed overall response rate. Again, this is by uh, Rhesus 1.1. And when we look at our PFS, you know, about seven months. So what does our phase two, three trial look like? This trial is currently open, currently running. And I can say we are HLA restricted to HLA to negative patients only. And that's because, you know, TEVI, good therapy, is already approved for HLA2 positive patients. So this is a schema of our phase two, three trial. We are currently in the phase two portion right now. What we're doing now, and because of some guidance or recent guidance, I would say from the FDA, um, the phase two portion of this trial is sort of divided into two parts, phase 2A and a phase 2B. Um, we're having a dose optimization part of this trial at first to figure out the appropriate dose for a rovacertib in combination with crizotinib. I think we have an idea of what that dose should be, but in order to make sure that we test it appropriately, we're testing two doses. We plan on having a meeting with our independent data review committee, and that meeting um, in a blinded fashion will help us determine what is the best dose. We're looking at both efficacy and safety to do that. Once we um, have confirmed what our dose is going to be, we're going to continue to enroll patients at that dose level um, to complete the phase two portion. The patients that were uh, at a different dose level will then be allowed to move up to that other dose level um, or down and, as, as that dose level was chosen. Um, our goal is to have accelerated approval. Um, after the phase two portion, and that's going to be um, after that. We are simultaneously enrolling patients into the phase three portion where the um, primary endpoint is going to be overall survival. And similar to uh, Dr. Correa had mentioned before, we do have fast track designation for our combination with the rovacertib plus and metastatic uveal melanoma. 
And so this is our overall clinical development strategy. Um, our plan is to, yes, move forward in the neoadjuvant setting with both HLA2 positive and HLA2 negative patients. Um, yes, we do have a adjuvant plan. Um, I can say uh, Richard uh, with a big smile, and I'm sure I'll be able to talk with you in the next couple of weeks, but since ASCO, uh, myself and my uh, lead statistician have been uh, vigorously designing um, on a uh, adjuvant trial. And over here, we see what we're doing right now in terms of metastatic uveal melanoma. The trial that I just presented data for and spoke about, we've just amended that clinical trial actually to enroll an arm with an HLA-2 positive patients. And that ends this portion of my presentation.